The Brian Gould Show features content from the internet and current events throughout the world. All photos, videos, names, and other content is for entertainment purposes only. Please don't fall asleep. It's rude. Hey everybody, welcome to the Brian Gould Show. This is Season 3. Uh, kicking off things back to the original format, if you guys have been following me at all, uh, Season 1, I wasn't really in front of the camera. Towards the end of Season 1, I jumped in front of the camera, rolling into Season 2. I like that format, but for editing purposes and viewer purposes, I actually like going back to the not-in-front-of-camera side. A little bit more like a podcast setup. So, uh, Brian Gould here, your host, bringing in my buddy, Shane on Mike. Mike's here on the show. Say hi, Mike. Hey, what's up, everybody? Mike's going to help me out here in the weeks to come. Each week, we'll bounce things back and forth, have a little fun here while we're doing things. So, Earlier this week, Tank Abbott decided to issue a challenge to the great Ronda Rousey. Now, he was talking about it in his podcast. He says uh, he wanted to issue a challenge to her. I don't care. I'll fight any woman on this earth for free. I won't even train, he declared. Now, Tank Abbott was a great fighter in the early 90s, mid-90s, going into the 2000s, and then his career kind of took a dump. Mike, Tank fought 25 times. Out of 25 professional MMA fights, do you know how many times he won? Take a guess. Uh, like seven. Seven. You're very close. He won 10 fights in his professional career. That means he lost 15 times. The guy's 50 years old. He issues a challenge to Ronda Rousey. If he beats her, then she has to make him a sandwich. But if he loses, he'll offer 100 grand. Crazy stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it's crazy stuff. You know, Tank Abbott, I've seen him way, way back in the 90s in the UFC. He he just needs to just, uh, you know... Realize that he's uh, realize, got nothing yeah. left in the tank. Yeah, he does. He, he was a beast back in the 90s. I mean, his record is 10 and 15. He last fought in 2013, and his last win was in 2009. So six years ago, and he's going to issue a challenge to, to Ronda Rousey. Now, the only sandwich that he'd ever get from Ronda Rousey would be a knuckle sandwich. Yeah, it would. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, unbelievable. Ronda, you know? you know, she's a UFC champ over there for the women. She's 12-0. Uh, undefeated. Undefeated. And rips everyone's arms right off at the hinges. Oh, yeah. So I watched her last fight, and it was unbelievable. You know, very, very... She is one tough woman in the UFC, and, you know, props to her, you know? Absolutely. No, I agree. She's done something that hasn't been done. She's paving the way for women's MMA and has gotten better with each fight, and that's hard to do. There's very few people on the planet that can fight whether it be boxing or MMA, and actually get better every fight. She might show a weakness a little bit here or there, but she's gotten better every fight. So, I don't know, Tank Abbott, 50 years old, taking a shot at Ronda Rousey, that's just ridiculous. Tank was a beast back in the day, now he is a beast, literally the size of one, but <laughs> I'm sure he can't fight like one. But, <laughs> but you know what, in his heyday, you know, I give him props, he went over to WCW, he tried the wrestling thing for a minute, and that failed, but yeah, at least he tried. Fail. He hasn't beaten any big names, he's lost to uh, Dan Severn, he's lost to uh, Frank, Mir Frank Mir, he even lost to Kimbo Slice, and that guy's a badass, but he's not an MMA fighter. So no, that, he's a street fighter. He's a street fighter, exactly. That tells you right there what kind of joke this guy is at this age. But I don't know. What do you got, Mike? Uh, I got the uh, since we're uh, talking about uh, UFC uh, this coming Saturday, we got UFC 192 with the World Light Heavyweight Championship as Cormier versus Gustafsson. Uh, what do you think about that fight? You know what? Uh, I think for the sake of just having a title match, that's all it is at this point. UFC has been a little stagnant and dry, in my opinion, for the last handful of years. The last good run I, I think that they had was the early to mid-2000s uh, at the turn of the century here, so to speak. Uh, we had uh, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, those guys, you know, Tito Ortiz, that... Those had some real draw power names that really brought me 
to every pay-per-view, whether it's at Buffalo Wild Wings or Ale House, wherever, wherever the pay-per-view is being shown, that's where I was at. Now, I don't know. I think Cormier uh, versus Gustafsson is just uh, two names that are sticking on a poster and hoping that they have a decent buy rate. I think what ended up happening with uh, UFC is they bought out all their competition, branded them as their own, and they're that's it. It's not really monopolized. There's a few decent ones out there like uh, Bellator. I watched the last Bellator show on Spike TV. Tito Ortiz fighting for their light heavyweight title and he was beating the snot out oh, of yeah. that guy. Oh yeah. Pounding him and then just got submitted. He made a, a rookie mistake really which I was surprised to see but I think this card coming up Saturday is all right at best but that's all UFC has to offer. One of my buddies that I talked to about this, uh, we we both concluded that the UFC needs their own version of a WrestleMania or a Night of Champions where five or six titles are on the line once a year or you know every seven to eight months. Just do a big name oh, show, yeah. so to speak. Oh, yeah. Take a page out of Vince's book. Yeah, Dana. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. name name it something good. That's how it used to be back when Frank Mir would fight. You know, whoever or Andre Arlovsky would fight, it was redemption or undisputed. It oh, was, yeah. it, it, I remember. It, I remember back in the day, they had the UFC Super Fight title, the Ultimate Ultimate. Title. Yeah, exactly. Bring it back. Uh, bring oh, yeah. something back. Bring someone back. You know, UFC has been getting dried up for the last few months, and it's getting old. You know, it, bring something new to the table. Bring something old school back to the table, like. The super fight title or the ultimate ultimate title, you know? Something. Yeah, it, something. it, it needs something. And mm-hmm. and build off of that. Pick 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 a, a theme. A, a Night of Champions or their their UFC Fighter or Night Mania. Of Legends. A Night of Legends. Whatever you want to call it. And build off of that. Figure out where the mistakes are, what they've missed, and just move forward off of that. And then add a second one. Maybe every three to four months, have three a year, have four a year, quarterly, however you want to do it. But if you want to keep the audience where they're at now without plummeting more numbers, they, they have to come up with something. You, you're, uh, you're watered down, and there's too many fighters that aren't getting noticed and recognized. I understand that after buying up all these other brands, but it's of no interest to, to me right now. So, you know, speaking of sports, uh, the 2020 Olympic Games are coming up in a few years, and... Earlier this week, I, I even mentioned it on my Twitter page. Uh, karate, sports climbing, baseball slash softball, surfing, and skateboarding are all being talked about being added to the Summer Olympics, the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Now, I didn't even know baseball slash softball wasn't even on the list of summer sports in the Olympics. Me neither. The the three three of them got voted off, and the three were bowling squash and wushu i have no idea what squash and wushu are squash is what i eat you know in the fall but you know <laughs> yeah that's what everyone eats you know I, I don't know the, those three sports there bowling squash and wushu got omitted or were omitted but the other five karate sports climbing baseball slash softball surfing and skateboarding now can you honestly see a japanese guy in a surfboard not trying no. to racially profile, but come no. on. You know? <laughs> no. No. No, not really. No. An Aussie, yeah. An American, yeah. yeah. Um, Canadian, maybe. Uh, you know, someone from Peru, Brazil. I, I can see someone from Brazil. I'm sure you could. Oh. What are you trying to say? That they're they're hoppers? You know? <laughs> no. Not, no. 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 <laughs> you know, the other sports, sure. I guess. Throw them on there. Skateboarding, I, I don't really see... Uh, I don't see how that's an, an Olympic sport. Right. Karate? I didn't even know karate wasn't on the list. What happened to that? I thought that was you know up there with like judo or jujitsu and stuff like that. Isn't that kind of the same field? Why why would that not be already an Olympic sport? I mean, they took out amateur wrestling. Now there's talks that they might bring that back. It just the whole Olympic concept now is a little upside down in my opinion. I like watching the winter sports. I'm a big basketball guy, big hockey guy. Uh, you know, 
curling is kind of yeah. cool to watch. Um, you know, the skateboarding deal, you know, we, you know, I couldn't believe it that they've got that in that category for the Special Olympics for that. And, you know, uh, it's unbelievable, you know. Um, I, from, you know, every year I watch the X Games and I see that and, you know, it's, you know, it's a big surprise that it's going to be in the Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo, you know. I'm just, I don't know if these sports are being added to someone's advantage or not, but we'll see. It, it, interesting. I mean, it's not a big deal. Not a lot of people follow the Olympics until the Americans are in the gold medal round of something or even the silver, I guess, bronze, until we're going for a medal. I mean, all time, the United States does hold the record for the most medals combined between the gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, close second is the old USSR, not Russia, USSR. Now Russia's considered yeah. their own entity, but it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Like I said, it might be in the advantage of somebody. I just don't know who. As far as I know, you know the, the skateboarding and even, I believe, surfing, aren't both of those definitely skateboarding <laughs> is in the X Games, so I don't understand why that, I mean, maybe it's getting that global. I, I, I would understand it, but we'll see. All right, we have uh, we have uh, WWE uh, live live from MSG uh, this Saturday as Big Show versus Brock Lesnar headlining the event. That'll be big. And oh yeah, uh, all of the uh, few encounters Big Show and Brock Lesnar had, you know, they I uh, remember back in two thousand two, Big Show holds that big win at. Madison Square Garden against Brock Lesnar, you know. He has talked over and over and proven that he has beaten Lesnar quite a few times, and we'll see, you know. I remember that one event back in Orlando back in 2003 where the ring broke. Oak. That was huge. <laughs> Oak, you know, it was unbelievable, you know. Uh, two guys running on top of the turnbuckle, and all of a sudden a big suplex, and boom, the ring just imploded right off the right out from underneath him I've taken yeah. a few of those superplexes okay. those aren't fun <laughs> but Lesnar is a badass that's my boy a lot of people aren't too keen on him but he he ended the taker streak which I applaud that it needed to end it needed to end a long time ago but at least it ended to a legit guy because Lesnar whether you guys like it or not is a legit badass he's proven and no matter what the storyline is that's being fed to him he makes whatever match it is that he's involved in that much more interesting and more intriguing. Sorry for the the wrestling fans that are, you know, uh, true wrestlers. They they like their their macho mans, their Mr. Perfects, the real hard workers. Even John Cena is a hard worker. He works a lot, but he's not a great wrestler. I'm sorry. I, I give him a little bit of an overrated. Uh, rating on the wrestling aspect of it, but he is a workhorse. But this Saturday, Brock Lesnar, big show at MSG. That's going to be a good match. I, I personally think Brock Lesnar is going to destroy him. It'll be it'll be a little back and forth for about three minutes, and then Brock needs to just do the right thing and end that match. But people can't forget what happened. You know, people are guessing right now that Paul Heyman might pull another trick couple save like he did back yeah, in 2002, you know. I, I don't like he, that. I, I'm not a big, big advocate of the advocate <laughs> turning on Brock Lesnar. One of my buddies thinks is all, every pay-per-view that Brock's been on in the last <clears> year, <throat> Heyman's going to turn, Heyman's going to turn. Heyman's not doing anything but ex- getting on that plane with Brock Lesnar and flying his ass home. Heyman's not turning for the sake of... <clears throat> of any storyline, Lesnar needs Heyman. Heyman needs Lesnar. You can't split them up. Heyman's not turning. You think Heyman's going to turn this Saturday? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Well, maybe yes or no? I mean, you, uh, yeah. You think yeah. so? Yeah, I think so. What What's the advantage of doing that? Well, you know, he he's uh, the money. You know, everyone takes the money, and you know, greed, greed. And, yeah, but you know what? Without Brock, there's no money there for Paul to make. Who's he going to go? He's going to go side with Big Show? Is he going to be Undertaker's new manager? The Dead Man? Because those guys are meeting at Hell in a Cell. If anything, I could see that. 
maybe Paul helping out Taker, but and I, I don't know. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> All right. Plus, we have uh, this Sunday. We've got the big TNA Wrestling's Bound for Glory, at um, headlining the event, <clears throat> the three-way match for the world title, Drew Galloway versus. EC3 versus Matt Hardy and the special referee, Jeff Hardy. What do you think about that one? Okay, honestly, I haven't watched a TNA show in probably over a year. They, they've been hard for me to follow. The one and only episode of their existence that I've actually been able to watch beginning to end was a couple years ago when they went head-to-head with Monday Night Raw and they pulled out all stops. They had the NWO or Click. Uh, they had Jeff Hardy show up. They had they had all these big names show up, and I thought that they could be a contender with the WWE if they ran with that format. Yeah, they were the older, used up guys, so to speak. But it was intriguing because you know what it had me do? It had me flip back and forth between that and Raw, and I hadn't done that since the late '90s, early 2000s when WCW was around. So, getting back to the match. Uh, I don't see Matt Hardy winning it. There's a lot of speculation that the Hardys are leaving and heading back over to the WWE. When when you hear that trembling, and as much as it has been lately, there's got to be some truth to it. So the only thing that I can think of is to, to slow that process down is if Matt were to win the title. But if he doesn't win the title, then definitely look for those two to be bailing out soon. My opinion. Yeah. I Who do can, you have winning? Uh, you know, I'm not. <clears throat> you know, I, I've, I've seen, EC3 time after time. He's a hard worker, and, you know, I gotta give him props. But you know what? I could see Drew Galloway, coming out on top. I agree. Uh, you know, he's he's, uh, busts his butt, in the WWE, and then he came to TNA. And, you know, time after time, you know, he stood for what's right in wrestling and <clears throat> rising up. And, you know, I could see him winning that world title this Sunday, you know, finally win the big one. He could he could do it. I could see that happening. Speaking of press, uh, wrestling, real pro wrestling out of Fort Myers, Florida, uh, here in the indie scene, is huge in Florida. Uh, these guys putting on another... Another fantastic event. It's uh, happening next Tuesday, October sec- uh, excuse me, October sixth, at the Riverside Community Center. I've been there for their first show. Uh, they did pretty good, uh, and they're only getting better. Uh, they've got a big tournament for their their championship right now. Uh, some names that are on that card: Preston Kane, uh, Tim Sirago. He's a hometown favorite. The crowd really gets behind him. <laughs> Torture, man, talk about, speaking of beasts, love that guy. Love watching him wrestle. He's a great entertainer, really great in the ring. Joey about a food court. Romeo, Draven Frost, former FPW heavyweight champ, Deacon Star, and many more are on, on that card. So um, it kicks off at, uh, doors open at 6.30, bell time's at 7. Check it out if you're in the area. These guys are putting on a great shows and have a great <coughs> tournament for their heavyweight title. I could, I could, uh, yeah, that's a, gonna be definitely a good show. And, you know, uh, another one is, um, you know, just before we got that subject, uh, human, uh, human horror show, Zach Monster. That's a guy that I'm really looking forward to see as the real pro wrestling top crown champ. He is guaranteed to win, and I'm, that's my favorite. Zach is a great entertainer. He's great in the ring. He's taking on Chico Adams, another great wrestler. That'll be a really good match. It might even be the match of the night right there. Zach's come a long way. He's He's been pushing through a lot of uh, obstacles in his wrestling career. But you're right. That that, that guy there, he knows how to he knows how to get down and, and, and scrap when it, when it breaks down to it. So real pro wrestling, Fort Myers. October 6th at the Riverside Community Center. Doors open at 6. Get there a little early. There's usually a line. These guys are putting on a great show. Uh, tickets are only 7 bucks for adults. Kids five and uh, 12 and younger are only 5 bucks. If you're 5 and younger, you're free. There's family four-packs to take advantage of. There's some concessions there. So 
definitely, uh, if you got nothing to do Tuesday night or you have plans made, cancel them and go check out Real Pro Wrestling. Great group down there. All right, we have got the uh, vi- anybody looking for the video game. We have Halo Five. Halo. Oh, and you know the final Halo. You know everyone has been talking about this for a long time, and it has now come to this. You know I cannot believe Halo is finally ending. But you know <clears throat> I played all the Halos, and now Halo Five. You know I'm looking forward to this one. You know. Uh, what do you think about it? Halo 5. I The last Halo that I touched, I I got into Halo 2 right at the end of its craze. Like the last third of its craze on, on the original Xbox. I picked it up, started playing it. I got hooked. I started doing the campaign and uh, loved playing online. Halo 3 took it to a whole different level. I was shocked <laughs> to see the transition from 2 to 3. Now, to some gamers, they, they feel, you know, it's, oh, it wasn't that big of a change. For me, it was because I'm not a big fan of the Halo franchise. I respect it, and I and I uh, really like to see how they have evolved. Again, the, the last one I touched was 3. I didn't get a chance to touch 4. I switched from uh, Xbox to PlayStation 3 at that point. So, um, to see that they're going to a fifth game and actually ending it is surprising to me. And now I, I'd imagine at some point they might do like a Legends game or, you know, I don't know how, how they could pull it off or maybe a, a spin off of it. it it's kind of like Metroid, like just when they say it's the last one and then here it is 20 years later and Metroid's still relevant. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, you've seen all the uh, remakes of all different games, you know. Like, it took them a long, long time, like uh, Duke Nukem, Forever, you know, that game took as long as it can be, you know. Yeah, look at Final Fantasy. Yeah, Gee, look at that. What are they on, like Final Fantasy 50 now or something? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, they're almost, uh, I think they're on 15. And, Unbelievable. And that game's a legendary. Yeah. No, and, and you know what? It's gone from some of these games like Metroid and even Mega Man, you, they picked up in the 80s and 90s they kind of slowed down because that's when Mario and Sonic really started <laughs> oh, taking yeah. off so they kind of got backburnered a little bit and then they come back around and Halo is just one of those games that you can talk about I mean top 10 gaming franchises of all time it, it's definitely on that list if it's not one it's not then it's two if it's not two it's three but it's up there so Halo 5 are you going to be picking it up or are you going to be playing it uh, probably, you know. Yeah, well, you're a Halo guy, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't wait for the release. Uh, near the end, uh, this, uh, next month, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, everyone, uh, pick up their copy next month. Uh, yeah. Halo, you know, Halo 5. You know what game I'm stuck on is, uh, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. That's the one I'm, I've been playing, like, religiously three hours a day every day since it came out on my PlayStation 3. My oldest daughter, her and I, we, we take turns passing the controller back and forth trying to get, you know, most kills or most amount of money in a in a in a run. And uh, the second one's coming out for PlayStation 4, so it looks like I'm gonna have to buy a whole new game system oh, just wow. to, yeah, just to play the stinking game because <laughs> it's it's my crack. I, I'm hooked on it. That's that's where the I think some of these uh, manufacturers are kind of dropping the ball a little bit. I was talking to a guy from GameStop last night. He was telling me that PS3 literally is on its last leg, and so is Xbox One. Like it, it, they're they're about to be done uh, taking games on trade in and everything else. Like whatever they have, pretty soon, right around the first of the year, maybe the middle of next year at the most, he said they'll stop taking stuff because it's just phased out. PlayStation Four is the new thing. And they're going to be waiting for Xbox's new game system, whatever that may or may not be called, <laughs> coming yeah. out. You know, it, this stuff's oh, yeah. not, never backwards compatible. That's how you make your money. Yeah. I get it. But to your faithful, loyal fans that, you know, I I, I had a PlayStation 2. Jeez, I must have had about 100 games for it because they were cheap. Oh, yeah, back then they were cheap. You know, I remember my first PS2, and it was awesome. You know, me and my brother... Non-stop playing, and then we had the Xbox, yep. and we we played till morning, you yeah, know, hours, you know, hours, hours, and like, hours I mean, you know? months and months and months. That's all you do, and that's oh, what yeah. you're committed to. And then they're like, oh yeah, by the way, the new one's coming out in 
in 18 months and all the stuff that you have for it, the, the controllers and games are not going to work on the new one. Now, Wii, the Nintendo Wii and Wii U, now I know some of the controllers are kind of interchangeable a little bit. They kind of did that right, but again, uh, I, as far as I know, the games aren't backwards compatible with the, you know, it, I don't know. I think uh, th if PlayStation 4 really wants to do something different, allow your system to play the older games. Or at least uh, give you a fat discount on getting the newer games. I, I, I mean, the money's not in the system. It's in you buying the games. It's in the software, not the hardware. But, again, I just wish some of this stuff was backwards compatible. Eventually it will be, I'm sure. So. So, last week, with my football picks... For those of you that know me, I like to uh, do a little short-term investing with, with football picks. I'll just leave it at that. I won a perfect 15-0 and 0 with my football picks last week. Made 260 bucks. This weekend, I am not gambling or short-term investing on all the games this week. The bye weeks pick up this week. There's injured players. Um, my picks this upcoming week... We've got Carolina at Tampa. Tampa's a three-and-a-half-point dog at home. Personally, I'm going to go with Tampa. I like Tampa in that game. They've got some momentum there. Carolina, yes, is 3-0, and but I think they are not proven. Well, Tampa's definitely not proven. Uh, I think Tampa's going to rally and put up a good homestand. Got the Giants at Buffalo. Buffalo's lights out this season. Yeah, They're playing out. really good. I, I like them at home. They're a five-point favorite. Yeah. I think they, they might even double that. And I know Eli's behind the helmet at the Giants there, but um, Buffalo's a better team right now. The good old Dallas Cowboys. Man, thanks to them, I a friend of mine decided to put a little wager on that with me, and I got my card detailed for free because the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> lost this last weekend. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Oh, they're, wow. Yeah, they're, they're in New Orleans. New Orleans is three-and-a-half-point favorite. Both teams suck this season. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but I, I like uh, New Orleans covering that heavily. Oh, yeah. Minnesota's at Denver. Uh, Minnesota's defense is mm. really good. Denver's a seven-point favorite. That means they're going to win by a touchdown. I like Minnesota to – I don't think Denver covers that. I think they might even lose. That that might even be another upset right there. Wow. Minnesota definitely chops into that seven points. I think Denver wins maybe by a field goal at best. Yeah. Got my Raiders at the Bears. That's a good game for the Raiders. Raiders are a three-point favorite in Chicago. Yay, they're favored for the first time on the road <laughs> ever. And my Lions are in Seattle. Seattle's a ten-point favorite. Lions haven't won a game yet. Yeah, I don't see them winning that game either. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and we've got the uh, last night's uh, Ravens winning in overtime last night over Pittsburgh, twenty-three to twenty. I cannot believe that, you know. You know that that was an intriguing game for me, even though Michael Vick's throwing the ball for Pittsburgh, but the kicker didn't the kicker miss a field goal or yeah. something for yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, he did. You know it. It's done, you know, I thought the uh, Pittsburgh was actually going to win last night, and then Baltimore turned it around, and, you know, they came rallying back in that third quarter, you know, and uh, they brought it into overtime where that unbelievable kick from the Ravens won it 23-10. to 23-20? Yeah. Well, yep. Ravens are a good team. They've always had a very solid team. They haven't been a great team. I think at times they've just been in the – right momentum at the right time when they won their Super Bowls. Uh, the last one against San Francisco, that was a good game to watch. But So you, you had Pittsburgh winning last night. You thought yeah. that you thought the Steelers yeah. were going to win. You know what, I, I'd agree with that. I mean, that's just a rivalry game, no matter who's throwing the ball or not throwing the ball. But overall, it, that rivalry is probably one of the better ones that we've seen in the last four or five seasons. My Michigan Wolverines are in Maryland tomorrow. They are a 14 and a half point favorite. Go blue. I, you know, I, I, I 
think and hope that they win by 100 points every game, but that's never going to happen. But No. No, no. But I, I do like my Michigan Wolverines winning in Maryland tomorrow. Now, I tweeted about this earlier today for those of you that follow me on Twitter. True or false, the New England Patriots only lose two games this season. And one of my buddies texts me right away, and he's like, true, very true, that they're only going to lose two games. Now, looking at the remainder of their schedule, they're on a bye week this week. They play at Dallas when they come back. Now, earlier when the schedule was made, I saw that game right there as the Super Bowl before the Super Bowl. New England at Dallas. Now, of course, Dallas doesn't have Romo, and that's just going to be a donkey trump game for New England. They're at Indy. They're home against the Jets. Jets, you know what Jets stands for? Just end the season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just end the season. Ha, ha, ha. They're home against Miami. They're home against Washington. They're not going to lose any of those games. Uh, they go on the road to New York to play the Giants. That that team's been a thorn in their asses. Yeah. Every super, the oh, two yeah. Super Bowls. Now they're home against Buffalo. Now earlier this season, the very first, what was it, the first or second game of the season? It was the, let me look here. It was the second game of the season. They went into Buffalo and squeaked out a win 40-32. to 32. Oh, wow. They were kicking their asses the whole game up until the fourth <clears throat> quarter. I was watching the uh, this game this past Sunday. I couldn't believe that. Oh, they destroyed doing, yeah, Jacksonville. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they destroyed yeah. Jacksonville 50 to... 52 to 10 or yeah. something. It was... Oh, yeah, 52 fi- to 51, 17. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they're going to be uh, home against Buffalo. Personally, the momentum that New England has right now, I don't think anybody really can stop them. Buffalo should hang with them, but it's the week after they play at Denver. And I think yeah. I think Denver can beat them. I think Buffalo can beat them at home, but Buffalo's going to be on the road in New England. If that was a home game there for Buffalo, I think Buffalo destroys them, yeah. but not going to happen. Then they're home against Philly. They're on the road against Houston. Houston's mm-hmm. defense is stepping up. Their offense is looking okay. Tennessee, eh, there's a win. They play the Jets again, there's a win. And Miami, they're in Miami to close out the season. Miami is supposed to be one of the teams to beat this year. Unless Miami finds their defense finally that yeah. they've overpaid for. Yeah. Take that. <laughs> uh, I only see New England losing one game, and that's yeah. possibly to Denver. Yep. So, true or false, they they only lose two games. I say false because I, I think they're only yeah, losing one. Here, say uh, say mere false, uh, losing one game. If they lose, uh, you know, you never know. Just they, gotta watch and see. Yeah, thank you, Roger Goodell, for pissing off mm-hmm. Tom Brady, trying to suspend him. Now he's gonna destroy every team that's put in front of him. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Well, there's the there's the football stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, good good stuff overall. Oh, yeah. You got anything else uh, you want to talk about? No, not at all. Not at no. all. I watched the movie The Loft last night. Have you seen that movie? Ah, uh, yes, about I the did. Five guys. Yep, that, yeah, I did. Wow. The, the the ending and then the ending to the ending was so crazy how it ended up being I can't even remember the characters names the guy with the glasses it ended up being his fault after all just how he's recording everything and messed everything I, that was a unique movie I, I watched it on Netflix I'm a big Netflix junkie guy <laughs> I, I can binge watch TV series for four days straight but uh, it was given four out of five stars so I thought right away okay I'll play it it was pretty good. I gave three out of five. I, I wouldn't give four. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give uh, three point five. Three point five. Uh, so you got five. A, you got a half ski over me. Yeah. You got to do a half star more yeah. than me. All right. <laughs> That's all right. That's fine. But uh, yeah, uh, another uh, before we go, uh, you know, uh, any movie? Uh, yeah, the uh, intern turn was a good movie. That's know? what I'm hearing. I have yet to see so, it. I want. I want to go see that movie. You know, and it's on Netflix. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, still on Netflix. Still, almost a year later, it's on Netflix. Oh wow! Yeah, you can watch it right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! It's gonna save me a lot of money. Yeah, no, definitely. You just have to, yeah. you know, pull up some Netflix action. And oh wow! Well, guys, thanks for tuning in. The website is being put together once again. I had it up there for a while, and it came down when I took my my short-term leave of absence here it'll be back up here hopefully by the end of october at the latest uh make sure you follow myself as well as shano mike mikey v here on all the social media plugs 
you'll find him on Facebook, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Put up goofy pictures, talk about sarcastic stuff all the time. Guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Brian Gould Show. We will be back next Friday with more meaningful information, and maybe it's pointless to some of you. <laughs> really don't care. But, hey, you listen. We appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next week. This is your host, Brian Gould. And this is Shane Mike signing off. Have a good one.